Because society doesn't want to give us what we deserve. And so if you're not relevant, society will put you in a box and tell you your voice doesn't matter. And your number one goal, agenda, as a man or a woman, is to make yourself relevant so that society doesn't make you irrelevant. Now what happens if you are not relevant in this culture? Automatically, by default, you sign yourself up for modern day slavery. And so the thing about modern day slavery, anybody can be a slave in this country. Black, white, man, woman, Muslim, Christian, anybody can be a slave. And the reason why we make ourselves slaves is we don't know how to do nothing well. We don't get educated, we don't get trained, and we don't become relevant. So now society gives us what they want us to have. And I'm explaining how much you get. So when you are a modern day slave, I won't go through all of this, but some of the things you, some of the consequences of being a modern day slave is you can't participate in the economy, you can't protect your offspring, meaning um, you can't put them in a setting or an environment that's safe for them because you can't afford that environment. You can't invest in your ideals. You can't purchase property. You can't pass down wealth, et cetera, et cetera. So thinking about being an expert and a problem solver and relevant, what you're trying to become is, a, is this right here. You're trying to become a human resource. And the reason why you need to be a human resource and necessary is so that you can demand a salary. And the reason why you need to demand money, because basically you need to tell society whether you want to or not, you're going to give me money. And the only way you can do that is you can solve somebody's problem. And I'll go into it deeper later, but my neighbor right now can hate my guts, want to see me dead, want to set my house on fire, et cetera, et cetera. But if his daughter has cancer and I got the cure for cancer, he can't, he's not going to get me off that block because he needs me. And that's what I want you guys to be thinking about. What can I do that will, will I can demand society give me money, give me money and why? Because once you can demand a salary, now you can pay for your vision. Remember that first, one of the first second slides was dream and vision? That's not free. That costs money. But once you can demand a salary, you now tell society, this is my dream, and you're going to pay the bill. All right. So uh, I, know, I know there's more guys in here, so I just threw this slide on there. For the rest of your life as a man, you've always ask yourself, what is a man? And you probably already asked yourself, you know, you might be 14, 15, 16, you always ask yourself, what does it mean to be a man? This is what it means to be a man. It means to take responsibility. So you have a dream, you have a vision, you have a desire for future reality. It, you're a man when you take responsibility for building that. What is the opposite of a man is a bum. What is a bum? He's irresponsible. He has a dream and a vision for his life, but he wants somebody else to build it for him. He wants to stand on the corner and hope somebody give him the money that he needs for his vision. And so for the rest of your life, if you ever in this space, and you're not going to always be a stand-up guy. Sometimes you're going to fall off. But it's important to know that in all situations as a man, I need to take some responsibility in order for my vision to come to pass. All right, so I'm going to like, it's 24, 25 laws. I call them laws that you have to live by in order to be successful. The first one I already kind of hinted at is having a dream or a vision. It's a desired future reality. The reason why you want a, a vision, because once you internalize your vision and you give your, make yourself responsible for it, it's almost like an angel on your shoulder now. I, like I said, life is a maze sometimes. Sometimes you get lost, sometimes you fall off. But if you have that vision in your mind, it helps you know when to turn and who not to hang around and where not to go and what not to do. What I would recommend you guys do, maybe today or tomorrow, go home and write down your vision. How do you want your life to look? What kind of people you want to be around? What type of places do you want to go? What do you want to have? Um, how do you want the world to see you? Go home and write it down and read it to yourself, maybe off and on for the next few weeks. All right, next thing, I also mentioned turning information into power. This is key. A hundred million. It's going to turn into sex ed real quick. Um, but when, a, when a, you guys were here, I'm going to tell you why you're here, but first, when a man ejaculates, he releases 100 million sperms into a woman. And those 100 million sperms begin to engage in war games. And they're fighting for what I would call the resource of the lady's egg. And the goal is for the, the fastest, the smartest, the wisest, the one with the most faith is to get there first. And guess who that represents today? That represents you. Out of them 100 million, you were the one with the most tenacity, the most strength, the most patience, all, everything necessary to win at that war game that was taking place in the womb. In America, there's only $1.5 trillion of physical currency in circulation. Now, this is the messed up part. Out of that $1.5 trillion, 99% is owned by 1%. That means, therefore, what's the remaining 1% of that $1.5 trillion? 0.5. Say it again? 0.5. Yes, yep. 
Yep, the remaining um, 1% of that 1.5 trillion, we fighting over. So it's like we back in the womb, fighting for resources. And so the thing about it is this, there's 325 million people in America, a little more now, but about 325 million people fighting for 1% of that 1.5 trillion. And that's why people don't want to give other people things. That's why we have a racism, because it's a group of people that come together and say, we're going to look out for each other a little bit more. So now, what do you need? There's a shortage of resources. What does that mean? There's, uh, there's, there's going to be a resource shortage, which means there's going to be a struggle for resources. I mean, the people are going to engage in war games again in society, trying to take what's available. So in order to win a, 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 a resource struggle, you need to have power. But now it becomes a power struggle. How do you define power? This is how I define power. And it goes all the way back to what I said. Power is the ability to make somebody do something they don't want to do. Again, this society does not want to give you what you deserve, so therefore you have to be able to take it. Because if you can't take it, you get a handout. Just enough to survive. And some people don't even care if you survive. They would love to see you die. Um, so you got to figure out how am I going to get power. And I told you guys, by like solving problems, making yourself relevant, being an expert at something. Number three, so what you got to do to get power is weaponize your intelligence. You all got a brain in here. I know you've heard it before. Your brain and your intelligence is the, the best weapon you have. It ain't how hard, how good you can fight. It ain't how much game you can spit. It ain't about how charismatic you are. It's about can you solve problems. And that's the definition of intelligence, the ability to solve problems. So some people are very smart. They have good memories and they can remember facts. But they can't take those facts and solve problems. So therefore, they're still irrelevant. They might have a good conversation at the bar, but they're still not solving problems. They're still irrelevant. So in order for you to be a higher thinker, you have to engage in higher learning. And that's why sooner or later you got to be determined, am I going to college to get a degree? Am I going to get a certificate? Am I going to get a, am I going to job training? What am I going to become an expert at? Some of you guys are like, it's whatever you want to be. You're like, I, I can do enough school as possible. I can go to school for 10, 15 years. As long as I'm an expert at what I want to be an expert in. Some of y'all are like, I'm going to graduate. I'm going to go to uh, learn a trade and be an expert that way. So you want to be asking yourself, how much gas do you have for college and training? Um, the only other option is, of course, getting out of school and going to get a job. Outside of getting out and getting a job, getting a job training certificate or a degree, there's really no other avenue for building your vision and funding your vision. So you want to be thinking about what I want to do, go to school, Go to college or get some training. All right, so weaponize your intelligence. Use your brain as a, a way to get power. Put the, I won't spend much time on this, but I'll put the puzzle together. Is How many people put together a puzzle? Okay, so what's the first thing you have? You dump the box, dump the box over all the pieces for all. You don't know what's going on, do you? you like, dang. Look the frame. Say it again. Frame. Yep. And that's the first thing you do. You start figuring out what strategy can I use to see what this picture is all about. And when I say picture here, I want you to think about life. Because for whatever reason, life has impacted all of us. And so you want to be self-aware about how life has impacted how you think and how you feel and how you behave. And that slowly comes together, slowly but surely, just like putting a puzzle together. Control your fate is the next law. Don't ever put your fate in another person's hands, even your parents. At some point, you have to stand back and say, this is my vision, I'm going to make it happen. Yes, you're going to always need help from people, but never put your faith in another person's hands because you never know what a person can die, a person can stop loving you, a person can betray you, all kinds of things a person can do that can throw your fate off course. So as you gain power in society, because the more you're learning, believe it or not, it might not look like it sometimes, but the more you become an expert in something, you're gaining power, you're gaining momentum. Um, I saw a guy do an analogy once, and he, he, he put a little girl, the girl, she wasn't a little, it was a smaller woman. She was probably like five feet tall, and then he, he had the biggest guy who was in the church. He was probably like six, four, six, five. And he said, if I tell her to push him down, y'all think she's going she to be able to push him down? Of course, everybody was like, no, she won't be able to push him down. But then he told her to take 20 steps back. And now he told her, I want you to run as fast as you can and knock him down. Now she has a better chance to knock them down because of what? Force. Force, yes. Velocity times mass equals force, momentum. And so in life, you gotta always have momentum. And so the best way to keep momentum is to understand that 
it's all about me, and I have to get it done. It's a psychological state of responsibility. And so with that power and that momentum, this is all you want to do. You want to affect reality. Every time you walk into reality, people should feel you. Well, when it comes to the reality of what you're an expert in, people should feel you and look to you and look towards you. What is reality? All reality is this. It's people, places, and things. If you were to gather everything in reality together, it would be three piles. A pile of people, places, and things. And so those things come together to create events. And so therefore, you need to have uh, power and control because at some point, you have to be able to control the culture. What's the culture, the norms, and the values, and the things that people do in a certain setting? And so you got to have some force and some momentum to, to participate in the culture and control the culture, and of course, create the future. People who are experts play a role in the future at, at all times, because they're the brains and the intelligence that's driving society. And so there's a certain future that you got to create for yourself, but you're also creating a future for other people. Focus with intentionality. As, as a youngster, you have to learn to listen. And I know it's hard. Even as an adult, sometimes it's hard to listen. But we live in an information age now, meaning information is like the money of society. Um, and so there's a lot of things competing for your attention, especially in class, especially when you should be doing certain things that are going to help you get forward in the future. And with that thing, with those things competing for your, your mental energy, you got to focus with intentionality. Um, and you got to be able to listen versus hearing. Who knows the difference between listening and hearing? Yes, sir. Hearing is just a little out of one ear. Say it again? Is it listening a little out of one ear, not the other one? Or is that hearing? Tell me. You close? I think you close. I know what I'm saying. Okay. You're great at hearing. Yeah. yeah. You're great at hearing. Okay. So this, this is the difference between listening and hearing. You ever been at home at, home at night? And you thought you hear something, right? But you heard it, but you don't know what it was, who it was, which side of the house it came from, etc. What do you do after you hear it? So you start listening. You start listening. Like, whoa, hold on, wait a second. And that's the same way you have to be in life in this information age. You can't just be hearing stuff. You got to be sitting down, focusing, and listening. Because the more you listen, of course, the more you learn, and of course, the more you learn, the less mistakes you make. All right. Motivation. Sometimes it's hard to be motivated to listen, right? Right now, if I told y'all, I'm going to be in here talking for six hours. And I want y'all to take perfect notes for six hours about everything I say. Most of y'all going to be like, you crazy, bro. Right? Y'all can go to sleep. Y'all going to start talking. You're going to get your phones out, etc. And you're going to say, there's no way possible. I would love to listen to you, bro, but I can't listen that long. I, don't, I can't pay attention that well. I challenge you now that you can, if you want to, Listen to me talk for six hours. And I'm going to give you an example. If I tell you right now that 15 years ago, one of my best friends robbed a bank and he stole $5 million. Before he got caught and killed, he robbed, he buried the money somewhere in his city. And if I tell you that I'm going to talk for the next six hours and tell you turn by turn exactly where that money is, you're going to listen, right? <laughs> because you see, you see the value. Because you see, because you see the value of that information. That information is worth what it takes for me to live the way I want to live. So now I can listen for six hours without no problem. Yes, sir. So it's fifteen years ago, though, right? But it's still there. But like, is it right? No, I'm saying it's it's bird, it's in a safety, 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 safety you deposit box. Yes. yes, vacuum sealer. Oh, yeah. You can listen hey, now, right? It was a better power. Right. <laughs> Run <Right> again. <laughs> Look again. That, what did you say? Tell me again, you clip. It's a metaphor. <laughs> that boy ready. <laughs> you can listen for this. For this five, this one, that's fine. Fine. <laughs> All right. So, one of the things we have to do as a human being in the information age, I think I told you guys, um, you guys know about evolution prior, if you remember science. And they teach in nature, Darwin came up with this theory that it was survival of the fittest. Yeah. Meaning the strongest person in the environment is the one that survives and gets all the resources. But because we're in information now, it's no longer really survival of the fittest or the strongest, it's survival of the smartest. Because remember, there's nothing but information out here. And so the person that evolves and adapts and keeps moving forward is the person who is the wisest and the most intelligent. So therefore, you need to master, I call it here, the art and science of learning. You have to know how to learn. because.